Here we have the all-new 2023 Honda Pilot. This one comes in the EXL trim level in the beautiful platinum white pearl. Then we have black leather interior. And our powertrain consists of a 285 horsepower, 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6 engine. Made it to a 10 speed automatic transmission. And just love how they did this redesign here. Very Acura-esque. Coming around to the front end here, we get our LED daytime running lights along with LED headlamps and LED fog lights. And the lights do not flash like that. That's just how my camera's picking them up. But see, there's a new Accord back there. Can't wait to review that one next. Love these new redesigns. And then here we have 18 inch aluminum wheels. Passive keyless entry on the front two doors. And here are our controls for the memory seats, power mirrors here. Then we have our power door lock controls, rear window lock controls. And then we get one touch automatic up and down windows on all four doors. And love how they did the storage here. You can fit a really big bottle there and then you still have storage here and in this door pocket here and then this is for our power lift gate traction control and here's our power driver seat with power lumbar support now before we check out the leg room let's see if we can see through this tinted glass here I'm gonna get as close as possible we're gonna go through all the standard features So you really do get a lot with this one and really not a bad price honestly uh, the sun's starting to come out so right at forty-four thousand fifty dollars for the sticker price and then big shout out to daryl waltrip honda for allowing me to review this one and you do get quite a bit more options and it brings you to that asking price there Gotta have the rear blinds, very nice there. Very easy to use, I like that. And once again, really smart with the door panel here. Two cup holders there, pocket, pocket, pocket. And then we can actually slide this seat back and forth. And very impressive legroom for a three row SUV like this. Knees are barely touching the back of the seat, and it's only because this rear pocket is so thick here. So really, when I'm sitting like this, they're not touching, then I even have enough room on the sides to sit like this. So for someone six foot three like myself, seat in front of just for someone of my size, still have great leg room here. Very impressed. And we have our rear AC controls here. So we can turn it on, set the auto mode, fan speed, all of that. I think I have it locked up front, which is why it's not working. And then rear AC vents there, two USB ports there. And then this one has the second row captain chairs. Let's go ahead and make our way to the back. Fuel filler here. And I do like that we get 27 miles per gallon with this pilot. Due to the active fuel management you get with that V6. And there's the new rear end there, really like that. And LED tail lights as well. Let's see if we can get this exhaust. There's a dual exhaust there, and your spares underneath as well. And this one has a third row down. And of course, we can fold that up mats in the way but we can just pull up here and then I like that you can actually adjust it from here whether you want it all the way back or if you want to push it up some you can lock it into place there so really really nice and then I really just like how easy it is to fold back down not a lot of forces needed very impressed there's a USB a input two cup holders on both sides in the third row so really just like how they did that and then love the storage back here so you can actually unlock this and then you can get to your jack down there as well if you ever need to use that spare underneath the vehicle but then for daily use i like that you can just put something back here and if you want it in the trunk and don't want it to roll around you have that option and a 12 volt back here and then storage underneath here
But all in all, so far, really impressed with this pilot and just all that it's bringing to the table here. And then we can also, of course, if we want to get to the third row, press of a, put, press of a button, and then we can get back there. And then just many ways to adjust the seat, scoot it back, or we can lock it into place, and then you can hit it from back there. So just plenty of ways to adjust it. And then if you just want to do the seat bottom or seat back, you can fold that flat. And then you have all that additional storage for space or for longer objects, excuse me. And then going to this front passenger seat, love that we still have power here. And then a lockable glove compartment as well with owner's manuals, decent size, but then you also have a really large pocket here. And that was a really good design move there. Phones can go here. And if you have a small handbag, that can go there as well. But of course the looks of this are very impressive. But the usability is what really keeps these settling like they do. Where is that? But let's go ahead and take a look at the engine bay. At this 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6. That gets you 285 horsepower. And I'm not used to Honda covering up their engines completely, but there it is underneath all of that. But let's go ahead and hop in the driver's seat. So I really love the leather wrapped steering wheel. Pretty much same design in many of the other new Hondas I've driven, like the three spoke feel and then you have the hole there. But love the steering wheel, of course it's heated and leather wrapped, so very nice. Now to this nine inch screen we have here, we do get AM, FM, XM radio along with Bluetooth audio. And then we have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility as well. But again, compared to the other radios I've done in the more basic vehicles like the CRV hybrid, and then I did the Civic Sport hatchback. Even though this is only two inches bigger, you have a lot more going on here, but I actually just like the simplicity. So when my CarPlay is connected, it'll actually show me there when it's not, <clears throat> excuse me, I can just hit that button, connect new device, really easy to walk you through the prompts, and then radio here, phone here, if you need to go ahead and call somebody, there's a device list, all that set up, FM radio, and then of course you can uh, change your source with a touch of a button and go to AM really quickly or go to the smartphone. So really just like how all that's set up and then big plus here, having the display mode quickly available and then I can just adjust with a touch of a button or just cut the display off. So really just like how everything is done here. And you have a compass, a few other features here, but for the most part, like I said, all the important stuff is down here, which I really like. And then you still have a volume knob or a track list or seek. Two buttons for that there, excuse me. Now there's the backup camera and then guidelines follow you as you turn the steering wheel. And then you have the multi view so you can get closer to what you're, depending on what you're doing, get a closer view there. And then you can have up your sensors as well. <clears throat> and hazards are down here, which I'm glad that it's in the middle, but it's small enough where it's out of the way. So it's not like a huge button. And then we have our AC vents here. And then down here we have our dual zone automatic climate control. So we can just cut that on there, sync if we want to, turn the auto mode if we, on if we want to. And then we have our rear defrost and heated mirror controls here. Front defrost, AC we can toggle, and then where we want the airflow, we can go through all that here. And then three stage heated seats for the driver, front passenger. And I like that we have dedicated buttons because if you have one of these vehicles, more than likely you're gonna have your rear passengers. And I think it's nice that it's not a hassle to go through the rear setting. So I can just lock the AC there or actually pull all that up and then adjust their temperature and their fan speed 
and then even cut it on and off if I want to. Little storage pocket here, USB-A, USB-C charge port, 12 volt. Nice size wireless charging pad here, and then you can actually power it on and off. And I'd also like that I can have this separate area there for someone else's phone, or if I want to put change there, whatever. Of course, watch the change because you don't want it on this charging pad, but you know, just maybe a key or something. Now for the 10 speed, you press P for park, hit this for reverse, N for neutral, D for drive, then hit it again to go into that sport mode. And you do get paddle shifters behind the steering wheel, which is really nice. And then we have several drive modes. We have snow, tow, econ, normal, and sport. And then we have a downhill brake control here. We can toggle our auto stop on and off, electronic parking brake, pull up to engage, press down to disengage, automatic brake hold, and then really nice size center console cubby space. There's a view of the back from up here. The cabin chairs look really nice, by the way. And then here, sunglasses holder. And if you want to use it as that rear mirror to check on the kids, keep an eye on them, you can do that. And then universal garage door transmitter here. You have the premium dome lights here. And then to the steering wheel, Track list or radio station presets are here. Volume controls. This home button, you can go to the left side of the gauge cluster using the scroll bar as well. And I've said this before, I just love how easy it is to go through this. All Everything that you need is right where it needs to be. It just makes sense. Voice recognition there. Lane keep assist is here. Adaptive cruise there. Set, resume, cancel, and then you can adjust the gap for that adaptive cruise here. Headlamp controls are here. High beams, flash, and then fog light controls here, blinkers. And then to the right side of the steering wheel, one time for the windshield wipers, intermittent, low, high. You can set your intermittent here. Your rear wipers are here. And then you can either pull up here or pull down here for rear wiper fluid and then pull up here for front wiper fluid. And then here we have our push button start. And finally, here's our key fob with remote start. But next is time we go ahead and take this all new 2023 Honda Pilot EXL out on the road for a quick test drive. So the Honda Pilot is definitely a vehicle you tend not to think about until you're just thinking about that. And what I mean by that is there are a lot of times where we think about large SUVs we think about the Tahoes, we think about the Expeditions, and then we think about the Sequoias, and we don't necessarily think about the Honda Pilot. But for me, it's always been kind of in that spot by itself where if you're in the market for something a step below, like a Chevy Traverse or a Ford Explorer or a Toyota Highlander, you look at these pilots, but if you also are in the market for one of those larger SUVs, this is like almost there so really just impressed with the redesign for this suv and i just like how we still have all of our standard uh, honda safety features that we don't we weren't really getting with everyone else until here recently i mean i remember in the 18 i think it was um one of those i think it might have been a civic or an accord or something you had lane keep assist with adaptive cruise and that was just really a big thing for that kind of vehicle to have and now it's just becoming standard for everyone but honda for me i really thought that they were the first ones to really step their game up with all the safety features coming standard where you really could relax while you were driving And we still have a V6 here. We do have a 10 speed automatic now in these newer pilots. So I think a couple of years ago, a few years ago, they had the V6, but it just had, I want to say it was an eight speed automatic or a seven speed. It might have been a nine speed. It was one of those. And that transmission was pretty good, but the 10 speed just gives you that much more flexibility 
whether you're towing, hauling, or just riding on the interstate. But it also is really fun to use with the paddle shifters. Now for me, the normal mode, at least right now, it's just a tad undecisive. And I think a lot of that does have to do with the 10-speed automatic. So I'm gonna put it into the sport mode after this light and see how it accelerates and just how the transmission shifts. And there's our auto stop there. Yeah, feeling much more, much more power in the sport mode. Now it's not like when I was in the Civic, I think it was the Civic, it was something, but <clears throat> it might have been a CRV hybrid, but the sport mode just, it's different, but not that much more different. But like in this pilot here, going from normal mode to sport mode, you really feel the V6. You're like, oh yeah, this isn't a four cylinder. And this thing really does go. Now the shifts in the sport mode are kind of like suggestions. Maybe I need to put it in the uh, shift mode there. Let's see, yeah, that's much better. So you wanna make sure you are in the S mode on the shifter and then sport mode in your drive modes. And then this thing really does wanna be a race car. Shifts are really precise. It actually listens to you. They're not suggestions. So very impressed there. Yeah, the acceleration is actually really great because I'm only putting my foot down about a third, in between the third and halfway down. I'm gonna give it some throttle here though. Yeah, I just love how quickly it shifts. Absolutely great. I'm gonna put it back into drive mode here, put it into econ, and then turn on the adaptive cruise. So I like that we're able to see the fuel mileage on the left side when I put it into the range and fuel setting there for the gauge cluster. And pretty good ride, I, I, it's a solid ride, let me say that. So coming down the interstate here, even though this stretch of I-65 is extremely, I shouldn't say extremely, but pretty rough, it's a really solid ride, even though I can feel the road, I can hear the road, it's not uncomfortable or something that I would notice without actually looking for it. So the pilots have been known for that for years. Just a really, really good ride all the way around. So for me, if you're in that segment between, let's say the Highlander and the Traverse and the Pathfinder, things along those lines, and you don't necessarily wanna to go to the bigger counterparts like the Armada, the Sequoia, and the Tahoe, definitely take a look at this pilot you get really good gas mileage, a naturally aspirated V6, 10 speed automatic, tons of space in here as well. And then if you're wanting something that has that Honda reliability, you don't have to worry about a turbo and you still have plenty of power getting 285 horsepower out of this V6, definitely recommend taking a look at the all new 2023 on the pilot and this is the EXL trim level.